Hello and welcome to Spotlight, where we look at products and systems that are changing aviation. Now we heard in August that Airbus is bringing a new dimension to the A320 family with an enhanced flight vision system. At the heart of the system is a next generation enhanced vision sensor to be supplied by Collins Aerospace. So we're going to take a look at EVS and also look at the impact it can particularly make in our region. I'm joined by Jean-Pierre Rivet, the Marketing Director Europe for Middle East and Africa for Avionics, based in Toulouse for Collins Aerospace, and Grant Blythe, the expert on EVS based in Portland in the United States. So, gentlemen, welcome. So Jean-Pierre, tell us about EVS and what it does. So it is, simply put, it's an infrared sensor, a camera, which is mounted to the aircraft nose, and it augments the pilot's natural vision. So it's a real feedback system. It's not reliant on any databases or any stored data. And the hardware is mounted in the aircraft radome and it looks forward along the aircraft trajectory. But the EVS camera on the front of the aircraft feeds that augmented vision uh, into the head up guidance uh, system on the aircraft. Uh, so with the pilot's head up and eyes out looking outside, he sees that augmented view overlaid on the real world. And that the combination of EVS and HGS head up guidance is referred to as EFVS, so Enhanced Flight Vision System. And that is really quite a formidable tool uh, for pilots. So where can we actually see this new technology? Uh, so this, this new technology is, has been selected for a number of different aircraft. In the business jets, uh, we have it on the Bombardier Globals, on some Challengers. At Embraer, we have it on the Legacy and also on the Praetor aircraft. And it's been selected also for some military aircraft. Uh, if we look at the air transport platforms, it's available on the 737NG and the MAX. And we're also very excited uh, to announce that we have come to an agreement with Airbus to launch a certification program for the enhanced vision system on the A320 family of aircraft. Now, I know you have a special interest in the Middle East region. How important is this development for the Middle East operators? Yeah, it's, it's a really important development. I'd say for Middle East operators, whether it's freight operations, corporate airline operations, on time and reliable operations are of paramount importance. And the EVS contributes to that by giving you that real time imagery of the runway environment, terrain obstacles, et cetera, as they be here ahead of the aircraft. Um, what makes it particularly important for the region is that you know, EVS uh, improves performance during darkness, uh, fog, but also during episodes where there's a lot of dust or sand in the air and the EVS performs very well in those conditions and allows the pilots to maintain their visual cues and situational awareness during the approach phase and while at the airport. Thank you and Grant if I can turn to you now Jean-Pierre has just made a very important point that will interest our Middle East markets and that's the small regional airports without an ILS and suddenly a sandstorm is brewing so how does this help? It, it really is a safety benefit. There's a number of different types of things that you're doing with an airplane or, or situations that pilots face where EFES really provides an enhanced level of, of situational awareness and enhanced level of safety. Uh, so when you think about the different root causes of different safety concerns, a lot of those come back to either poor visibility conditions or even just darkness at night. So a, a couple of examples of those in flight, that might be a pilot that is in an unfamiliar area, they lose their situational awareness and then concerns like controlled flight into terrain start to uh, become an issue. If you're talking about approach, uh, whether that's at night or, or in these degraded visibility conditions, uh, we've seen incidents where uh, a pilot incidentally aligned their approach to either the wrong runway or to a taxiway. Uh, so we're looking at situations like wrong surface operations there. Uh, and then on the ground, uh, we're just looking at things like ground collisions with baggage vehicles, with re refueling trucks or, or any of those uh, ground navigation type issues. So when you think about vision, pilots maybe of all of their senses rely on vision more than anything else. Okay, so it's not just on the approach, you can use it for taxiing too. That, that's right. We really view it as uh, a tool for the full flight uh, through every phase, really from, from pushback to, to block-in is the, the way that we like to describe it. 
really one of the great things about EFPS is it's it's not really just a uh, a single purpose tool. Uh, in the avionics business, we've been working on solving these all weather operations problems for uh, a long time, and and as we're seeing here today in 2021, where uh, experiencing some more extreme climate events or more frequent climate events, uh, the importance of being able to maintain operations in, in all weather conditions is really only growing more important. Regulators around the world in North America and Europe and here in the Middle East have recognized this and approved new rules that allow operators using EFES to continue operating and reduce visibility. And because this technology is on the airplane instead of on the ground, you really get to bring it with you wherever you go. So airlines that have EFES uh, don't need to delay flights, cancel flights, divert flights to alternate airports, and they're gonna be able to continue operating reliably on time and on schedule and even some very difficult conditions. 2021 means being efficient between the economic challenges around the pandemic, competition from other carriers, rising fuel and labor costs. We know that there's absolutely no room for you know, extra expenses, extra waste in your operations. Uh, so when you start to have a couple of delays, you divert a couple of flights to different airports, all of a sudden you'll see that you have airplanes in the wrong position, crews in the wrong position, the passengers are not in the right place at the right time. So with EFES, what we found with carriers is that not only are you saving direct operating costs, things like less fuel burned, waiting for ground delays on, on the apron, less fuel burned during air delays, less fuel and operating costs for go rounds. You're also saving these indirect costs of we're getting our passengers on time so we don't have to rebook them and have customer service accommodation costs. All right, so the financial case can be made, but today a big part of what we do in this industry is focusing on sustainability. Does EVS have a role to play in that as well? It really does help with CO2 emissions particularly. One thing that we've looked at with this technology is how can we really operate aircraft the most efficiently? And that means departing from your starting point and arriving at your destination in the most efficient path with the minimal amount of delay. So any time that we're spending waiting, idling the engines on the tarmac or in air delays, uh, waiting for weather to clear or uh, flying go rounds that add 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes to your flight time, you're burning additional fuel and emitting more CO2. So with this technology, we're trying to go straight to our destination on time, land the first time successfully, and then be able to complete that flight with really the minimal amount of fuel burn and the minimal amount of carbon emissions. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing the demo in action, maybe at the Dubai Air Show, perhaps. Well, as they say, seeing is believing. And I reckon, I believe this enhancement is gonna enhance safety and improve efficiency. Thank you for watching.